to the same. In the open university on land of Sri Lanka. It is 1978, and the co author of this book is now the chief minister of the northern province, my friend, Mr. Vignesu. Both of them are my generation. Both of them are not talking about the issues that Kirtimana is talking about. What is important, ladies and gentlemen, is in this today's seminar, is this act. Registration of Title Act Number 21 of 1919. First, port of call is to go to the web and copy this act. Then the 1914 Act, which also speaks about foreigners not being able to buy land, except some apartment land, with a remittance come from abroad, foreign direct remittance, and not from money acquired locally. But these things are happening. I am not being critical of anyone. I, myself, not individually, but through members of the family, we have apartment buildings, we have apartments, and my son is the secretary of one of the councils, management council. I asked him yesterday, I am coming for this seminar, and I told Ajita, uh, he said, that there is no real problem about ownership of apartments. That law is very clear. But being the secretary of the council, management council, I can tell you there are lots of problems about managing the apartments. If it's a high rise of over 60 apartments. Because there are two types of apartments. You have the foreigners who have invested, maybe the diaspora, maybe Sri Lankans abroad, Maybe foreign countries down there in the apartment that I have some interest, Iceland residency. There are about 15 apartments owned by the embassies. They reserve them for the embassy staff. So they are the owners. The tenants are good because they are foreigners. And the embassy staff, if something is not properly done, you can always tell the embassy, look, one of your people are not doing this and that. But there are some other tenants who don't care two hoots about the apartment and the common area. All that they are worried about is to pay their rent in time. And the owners of the apartments don't care two hoots about the way that the apartment is managed. All that they are interested is to see that their rent has been paid. So there is a huge concern as regards the common area, insurance of apartments, looking after the staff who are running the apartments and so on and so forth. So I was telling Akita that the legal aspects of acquiring the condominium building is not that great. The lawyers know how to do it. Lawyers have standard form deeds for a department uh, unit. And the, it is paid and bought. It is the management that matters, but she will address the issue. Take even the apartment, the condominium. I had trouble explaining to my students at PIM, they were not law students as such, on the same principle that whatever accedes to the soil, whatever is grown on the soil, accedes to the soil. Whatever is built on the land belongs to the land. So they used to get up and say, Dr. Vivasuya, uh, what about the apartment buildings? They are the second floor apartment is not built on the land, it is built on the first floor, on the concrete of the first floor. So what is this theory of yours that whatever is built has to be built on the land, on the soil, or there to be ownership? So I said, well, parliament can do anything. At one time, one of our former presidents said, parliament can do anything except to make a man a woman, and a woman a man. But even that has been done in some countries by sex change operations. I know Singapore, the law has been passed that a woman can be a man and a man a woman. If after an operation you can prove it so. So there are changes, many, many changes as I said. The apartment building is one. And it is stated in the apartment law that the parcel, the apartment parcel, the condominium parcel becomes the unit. So these, all Parliament has to do is to 
like the 19th Amendment, take away the executive powers of the president. No one thought that it could be done for years. We have been talking about it from 1990. But now it is going to happen. So parliament is supreme. Whatever the issue is, if the people want it, if the law requires it, it can be done. If you, it can be done without a revolution, without a revolt, without too much bloodshed at all. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to speak at length. I told Kiki Mala that I will uh, just introduce myself, say what a wonderful opportunity that I got to talk to all of you, and try to put it in a setting that this land law is new land law. And I don't want it said, and please, I don't think you will want it said that notaries are crooks. Notaries of Sri Lanka, one of the noblest professions that we have in this country, the convincing people have turned rogues. Because the cases that have come up, believe me, are of fraudulent notaries, where people have got at the notary and got them to write fraudulent deeds. The well-known case the Frederick Obesek, a very well-known lawyer, very well-known lawyer, whose own caretaker got hold of his land with a fraudulent notary. I don't know what happened to the case. It was going on for many years. They got Indian handwriting experts to come and show that this is not the writing of the vendor or the seller. I have lectured in foreign countries where Sri Lankan expatriates live. And they have come up to me after the lecture and said, I have a vacant land. The moment he says a vacant land, I put my hands up in power. Vacant land means other people's land. If you leave vacant land, especially in urban areas, or in semi-urban areas, that's a dangerous situation. One of the things that people used to do is to go and put a Buddhist statue on there, Buddha statue on the land. And they say, ah, oh, this land is now Sangika. This land belongs to temple, to the faith, to Buddhism, and no one can touch it. The police won't interfere. The moment you do that in a vacant land, the police OIC will say, sorry sir, there's a civil dispute, sort it out in the courts. And you know our court system. Most of you have been loyal. Fifteen years, twenty years, one lady recently died. On the 30th year in the appeal court, when the judgment was being given in her favor, I don't know how she collapsed, she died. After 30 years of listening to her case. So just forget it. If there's a fraudulent land deed, land case, don't think that the CID or the police will come and solve it for you. They won't. They will say, let the law take its course. I'm not blaming the judiciary. It's the court system. The court system is so dilatory, hopelessly so, that it takes 15 to 20 years to sort out a case, and even that is a short time in my view. So ladies and gentlemen, it's mind-boggling stuff that these two ladies, especially Keith Mali, is going to tell you. Uh, you have to be patient with what she's going to say. She's going to do it on slides. And uh, what happens later is what I am concerned. She asked me, can you help? I said, no, I can't, except to clear some hurdles and bottlenecks. You all suggest to her, what is the institution that sh she should run with? Is it the Bar Association of Children? Is it the Ministry of Justice? Not the Attorney General's Department. They won't take a matter like this. Is it the Register General? I don't know whether you should leave it entirely in the hands of the bureaucrats, or is it the private sector, or is it some association? So with those words, and the new terms that you will come across, I once again thank the organizers, I thank all of you for having the patience to listen to me, and uh, I hope that none of you have suffered from a fraudulent land deal. I know some of my friends have, they come with me and I console them with a whiskey. 
Don't worry about it. 